It is Tuesday. It is the 16th of July. We're more than halfway through the month and into tomorrow. The temperatures will be on the hot side once again. But after that, things are looking a lot nicer. Uh, things going to be seen. If everything works, we should be looking at some nicer conditions out there. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. A few low-hanging clouds over portions of areas close to the Tennessee-Georgia line and Lookout Mountain on Bailey's Heating and Air Camera from downtown on the EPB Fiber Optics Weather Cam Network. We had a decent backup at 7524 earlier, 24 west uh, from 75 north, and that backup is still, uh, for right now, most of that is a construction backup as opposed to the accident that we had earlier. So if you're heading toward uh, Moore Road, Germantown Road, we've got some heavy traffic, 75 north out of Georgia, heading toward downtown and the ridge. Uh, looks like that scrum of traffic is backing up 75 south, coming in from Knoxville and the Ottawa area. Other than that, everything is moving along pretty nicely for right now. So definitely some good news on that. The view from earlier tonight, probably a little bit more hazy. You can see some clouds, actually a little bit of light left over from sunset on the Plainview Outdoor Advertising Camera and overlooking the Chattanooga Airport. Not too much activity uh, going on there. Back to downtown from the North Shore, Chattanooga Theater Center, Speedy's Total Car Care Camera. Getting walloped by some pretty heavy amounts of rain earlier and some gusty winds as we had some brief severe weather across portions of the area. And one more check from the Chattanooga Zoo, Erlinger Hospital off in the distance and a very warm and muggy evening across much of the region. So not seeing anything in the way of cooler numbers, at least for now. 79, it's not as bad as it was last night, but the temperatures have rebounded a little bit partially thanks to those southwesterly winds, also partially due to the just minimal amount of sunlight that we wound up with as we got into evening right before sunset. So not really seeing, again, any great cool amounts of temperatures for right now. And to be completely and totally honest, when you get into an area where the lower 50s are your record low temperatures, that's as far down as we can possibly get on the extreme cold side of things for July. You know you're smack in the middle of the hottest time of the year. 94 the high, that's about 3 above normal. About 11 below a record high that hasn't been set since 1980. And officially we did not get any rainfall. That'll probably kick over at midnight to give us the information that we need uh, in regards to how much we actually got today, if any of that hit the airport out there. We did see again, well, for the month today, we have picked up a fraction of an inch, about nine hundredths. That is nowhere near enough for us to really keep things healthy around here where it comes to drought situation and wildfire risk. So, yes, we have gotten some rainfall uh, over the course of the last few days, although that equals out to about one one hundredth of an inch every two days. And that's not a lot, so that's the reason why we are 2.6 behind. 25 inches for the year, and by tomorrow at this time, I believe, uh, again, on the average, not picking up anything else. If we didn't get anything today officially at the airport, we will be officially half a foot behind on rainfall for 2024. Really not good news at this point for us or anybody else around here. And we could be looking at increasing wildfire danger across much of the area. So that could be a very big problem. Into uh, the recent, uh, about the last hour or so, we do have some spotty showers on News 12 radar right about the area from downtown up I-75 into the eastern viewing area right through there. Uh, portions of the area picking up some sprinkles, but outside of a few raindrops, we're just not getting too much of anything. The thunderstorms from earlier are diminished to basically showers, although south of Rome down toward Taylorsville, we are seeing a few rumbles of thunder earlier on. And it is possible as this boundary comes through here, setting up from Chattanooga back up to about Maryville and Knoxville, we might see a rumble of thunder or two 
maybe, but I think severe weather is out of the question for now. And any chance of rain, the best chance will be coming up as we go into tomorrow. So that will be a bit of a problem for outdoor activities. Temperatures right before 10 o'clock, high 70s for the most part, a few lower 70s showing up from time to time. And with that extra humidity, technically we kind of sort of have a heat index, but with the sun down, uh, the temperature is a little bit warmer in the lower 80s. <clears throat> Excuse me, Chattanooga, Dalton, Calhoun, all at the same temperatures, but 60s and 70s, that's nowhere close to the danger category, so we don't really have a lot going on where it comes to heat indexes. We do have some very warm numbers across the southeastern United States. More potential of uh, very warm weather could be in our semi-near future, according to the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, we'll show you that forecast coming up here in just a little bit. But for right now, uh, conditions settling down by just a little bit, and we seem to be having no major problems with anything huge happening for temperatures in the next couple of days. That, again, could change as we go. We've still got the rest of July and all of August to go through. And keep in mind that we can get into the high 90s, even close to the triple digits as far as September around here if the conditions are right. So we could be looking at some problems uh, coming up with that as well. So that, again, could be a bit of a problem uh, for us and for outdoor activities. So please keep that in mind. Uh, as we go through the next couple of days. Apologies to Twitch viewers. I thought I had this date corrected on here. Let me get that taken care of uh, real quick so that everybody knows a little bit more about what's going on. Uh, get that tag corrected on there. And then I think we should be uh, good to go. At least that's, that's a little bit better there so you can see the proper date and time. Uh, on there so hopefully that works all right so going into the near future what's going to be happening we've got the what's left of a frontal boundary sitting just over to our east over the carolinas and into around up into the mid-atlantic states there's really not that much left of that front the one that's inbound from the north in the upper left hand corner that is going to be our next weather maker some pretty good thunderstorms over north central arkansas this evening and some more activity way out toward the front range of the rockies but we're not seeing too much of anything going on outside of leftover clouds shower and thunderstorms back to our east and as we get into tomorrow again probably not much happening in the morning high 60s to low 70s for lows pushing the lower 90s tomorrow if we get enough sunshine if we get more clouds and rainfall we probably won't see anything in the mid 90s at least so that's some good news high 60s to lower 70s for lows on thursday that's where the front begins to come in and that will help to knock the temperatures down if we get enough rain and clouds to block out the sun Yes, it's going to be humid, but at least it won't be in the triple digits as we're expecting down around Augusta and into the mid-90s from Atlanta down into around northern parts of Alabama, 93, Birmingham on Thursday. Friday, that front settles in south of us. Might give us a bit of a break on the rain early on, but as an area of low pressure develops across the deep south, that'll help to shovel more moisture up our way. And temperatures may be a little warm, mid to upper 80s to right about 90 degrees, but nowhere near the triple digits. And that area of low pressure sticks around as we go into the weekend, so we will see more chances of showers and thunderstorms. High pressure working together with low pressure might move in enough moisture from the mid-Atlantic states to help with even more showers and thunderstorms. So suffice it to say, throughout the next several days, if you have any outdoor plans, you're going to have to, again, not as much to worry about with the heat, but it will be necessary to kind of keep an eye on things because with that humidity, it's going to be pretty stifling out there. Now, for the current conditions where it comes to heat advisories, we don't have any in effect and none posted for the next day or so because tomorrow, even though it's going to be hot, it's not going to be quite as hot into the Mid-South, the Mississippi Delta, or the Mid-Atlantic state. So that is very good news where we are concerned. Now, over the next six to 10 days, according to the short range Climate Prediction Center, things are looking much better and above normal chance of a below normal temperature. And you don't, you probably can't believe 
how long I've been waiting to tell people about this. So we will be taking an edge off the heat. Parts of the American West are going to be roasting once again. So anything west of Denver, Rapid City, and Albuquerque, uh, probably some more record highs and probably some worse wildfire outlooks out this direction. So if you're planning on <clears throat> excuse me, going camping out this direction, heed the fire warnings, the restrictions, if you can or cannot build a campfire, things like that, because there's tender dry conditions all across basically the western third of the United States. We'll take a better look at wildfire conditions where we are coming up into tomorrow, so stay tuned for more on that. The next 30 days is not showing any good news because that forecast into mid-August is showing above normal chances of hotter conditions coming through, and that for most most of the southeast United States. We are also seeing a less than normal chance back to the west of us for precipitation, higher than average chance from around New England, the mid-Atlantic down to the Gulf of precipitation chances. We are basically just smack, smack on normal, right spot on into the better possibility of just where we should be for this time of the year. Given how dry we are, it'd be nice to kind of get a little bit more off of this. That depends on how much tropical moisture we get from either just off the Gulf and the Atlantic or how much we get in the way of leftover tropical systems roaring on shore. So we'll see how well that works coming up in the semi-near future. So again, if you have plans, keep it tuned to News 12, and we'll keep you updated on all of that uh, into the course of the next several days. So toward the seven-day forecast, overlooking Chickamauga Lake and out toward Island Cove, uh, we don't have much happening right now, but in the next several days, we will see two things happening. Number one, more potential of showers and thunderstorms. Number two, we'll be looking at temperatures going from the lower to mid-90s on Wednesday to the lower 80s on Tuesday next. So some very good news if this pans out. Again, hot, the longer forecast range when you're looking that far into the future, things can change as you get closer and closer to the forecast update. So this, these forecast numbers you see here, it'd be nice, but they will probably change quite a lot through the weekend and into next week. So for right now, it looks better. Hopefully it stays that way, but these numbers have a habit of changing. That's what forecast numbers do as the atmosphere continues to change. So for right now, I think we've got everything looking a lot better. At least the temperatures won't be quite as oppressive, close to heat index territory in the heat warning areas, but we'll continue to watch that. And again, for outdoor activities, this is something that I think needs to be very much emphasized here every single day from the midweek period to the end of the week and next week into Tuesday, there will be a chance of showers and thunderstorms every single day. So vacation Bible school, uh, outdoor summer school activities, two-a-days for athletic practice, marching band practice at local schools is coming up pretty soon. And even with these numbers in the 80s, those conditions marching around out there, playing football, soccer, getting ready for the season, is going to be still brutal if you push yourself too much. So even with the heat and humidity, that's bad enough as it is. But again, whoever's in charge of these events needs to watch for lightning, instruct everybody to keep an eye out for lightning. If you hear, hear thunder, see lightning, it's time to get back indoors again. Don't forget that there are great apps you can use for your phone that can show where the lightning strike is nearest. And if it gets within a certain radius, it's time to wrap things up and head back indoors again. Then wait for 30 minutes for the storm to go beyond a 30 mile radius if it is moving that quickly. If it's not, it's a good idea to wait uh, again inside a sturdy building. Now, again, the storms may not move that fast. The ones today were just drifting at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So it's possible those storms could linger for an hour or more. And if there's a chance of lightning out there, I would keep everybody back indoors again where it's nice and cool, in the shade, wherever it is to get inside that building to make certain that you are protected by that. Maybe there's going to be some grumbling and grousing, but if you stay safe, yes, the odds are technically low when you get struck. But to get struck by lightning in America, your odds are about 1 in 725. 
per year. That doesn't sound like much, but on the other hand, why risk it? Just give everybody a chance to be indoors and make certain that you've got everybody in where you need to be, where they are safe, because this can be just as dangerous. Even though the heat is not going to be on full blast, a couple of things to worry about for outdoor activities. So again, please let's pay attention to what is going on out there. All right, let's take a quick check of the tropics first. Again, our cold front coming in will be giving us a better chance of some nicer conditions with more rain and thunder. We have a couple of areas, the East Pacific disturbance here, uh, back over, it's loosely organized excuse me, loosely organized, and as of the last update, the Hurricane Center was showing uh, just the one that has now been downgraded to a 30 and 30% 30 that you see there. So it is possible that we could see some development out of this, but for right now, it appears like this is not a huge potential of anything really going on. So some good news again on that. Now we also see uh, just south of Mexico, we have a new disturbance shaping up here. Uh, this one, very low in the near term. Slow development of this system is possible early next week while it moves to the west and northwest, parallel to the Mexican coastline. But they're only giving this area a 20% chance of development in the next seven days. So that does not look to be like too much for right now. Going even farther, and if I get the maps to cooperate, that would be wonderful. Uh, what we're looking at here again into the Atlantic is nothing going on. We've had nothing in the last couple of days ever since Beryl gave up, and there's not much left of that system, uh, if there is anything at all, on the northern side of the Atlantic. For right now, again, very quiet conditions. That's both good and bad news. The bad news is that as long as the temperatures of the Caribbean, the Gulf, and the Atlantic are above 80 degrees, any storm system that wanders through all this could use this as fuel to develop very quickly. It's called RI, rapid intensification, so we may see that happening very easily in the course of the next couple of weeks if we get something going. But we don't have anything going right now because the Sahara is opening up wide and sending tons of dust across the Atlantic. And again, that is acting as a filter to keep the possibility of really hot temperatures down into the area where these storms develop a lot lower. So this dust, it's actually a good helper to the Amazon rainforest. It provides a lot of biological nutrients. So from a continent and an ocean away, this dust will help to keep things growing in the Amazon. Uh, that also needs our help. Deforestation down there is at alarming levels and earlier on, unfortunately, has been reversed. Uh, we will see continuing chances of dust moving out here. And as long as this remains strong, we may not see as much in the way of activity. And that's why we're not seeing anything in the way of activity right now. But it's not going to take much for a system to take advantage of those ocean temperatures in the first 20, 30 feet of the ocean surface. That could yield some very powerful storms. We've only had three named storms so far. We could be seeing a lot more depending on if this dust begins to kind of diminish a little bit. And that could spell some big problems for us down the line. As barrel move through, usually when hurricanes track through an area, they will cause colder water to upwell as we start seeing the warmer waters dispel a little bit wherever that track goes of that particular storm. That did not happen with Beryl. The ocean is just way too warm at this time, and nothing basically cooled off. So the ocean has reset itself very quickly and is just waiting for another storm or storms to come wandering along to take advantage of that very warm ocean surface temperature. So that is something that we really need to pay attention to, especially if you're traveling to any tropical areas out there. All right, from a cooler vantage point, Taking a look, <clears throat> excuse me, at the the Canadian Rockies, uh, graduate of GPS Jolie Smith taking a graduation trip to Western Canada. Thank you very much, Ronnie Holden, for a nice view from I believe the area is called Banff, V A N F F. Always wanted to travel there. Some jagged uh, mountain peaks out there 
Definitely a mountain type view there for you. Love to see that. Thank you, Mr. Holden, for a view from Canada on that. If you've got pictures, Canada, Mexico, United States, wherever you're from, let's see your pictures. Send them in to us at pictures at WDEF.com. Uh, you can also go to our social media pages, which is also where we post these pictures to every single night. And if you'd like to see more about any other pictures out there, what other people are submitting, and to drop yours off, go to our website, WDEF.com slash photos, and you can see a lot more uh, out there where it comes to anything involving uh, picture taking. So thank you very much for that. Okay, according to the Weather Channel, where I borrowed this quiz from, since 1851 in basically recorded history, uh, up until that point, not really keeping a very good eye on what happened with storms, but which state in the Union has never experienced a hurricane landfall in that time frame of recorded history? 34% of you said Rhode Island, 25% uh, a tie between Maine and Virginia, and then also 16% uh, of you said Massachusetts. So uh, thanks to everybody for voting in our poll. And the correct answer, 25% of you, one quarter got Virginia, and that was the correct answer. That was a surprising answer to me. I would have expected more Maine or Rhode Island, to be completely and totally honest. But that's our friendinroofing.com weather poll question of the day. Uh, more coming up at midnight. The QR code available on your screen if you'd like to take a look there and see what's going on. And vote in news, weather, and sports polls available for you. So stop by and take a look at our website for more on that. Uh, from the Barnard Astronomical Society, this uh, last one that came up in the last uh, couple of weeks, we talked about these star parties, which they hold every once in a while. But again, this is a good opportunity to learn more about anything involving science and anything involving uh, more about what's going on with astronomy, which is a very cool science to find out more about. And if you haven't done so yet, uh, definitely a good time to find out more about what is happening with science, a good way to introduce your kids to the hobby. So coming up at Cloudland Canyon State Park in the Disc Golf area, August the 3rd at 8.30 to 11 o'clock evening time. Uh, again, two words very important here. Weather dependent. If there are clouds or rain or storms, then they will postpone or cancel. You can pay attention to their social media pages for more. Uh, thanking the Barnard Astronomical Society for bringing these star parties, as they're called, to the public. And if you'd like to know more about this, totally free, family-friendly accessible and guaranteed awesome according to their website so very cool to know that so stop by learn more about astronomy if you'd like to know more with the holiday season coming up about what would be a good uh, brand and type and size of a scope for maybe a younger amateur and uh, astronomer enthusiast these are the folks that to talk about it. So if you'd like to know more, more at their website at barnardastronomy.org. I'm going to try to get down there if I possibly can. We'll see more about what my schedule holds. But uh, once again, if you'd like to know more, barnardastronomy.org. Also, and again, if you haven't heard about this, this is a very cool thing that the National Weather Service is doing. Uh, the, we are covered in the News 12 viewing area by four National Weather Service offices, Huntsville, Peachtree City, Nashville, and National Weather Service in Morristown. You, maybe you've never been to a National Weather Service forecast office. The National Weather Service is the branch of the government responsible for issuing forecasts, issuing warnings, keeping track of local weather data that is under the branch of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is under the United States Department of Commerce. That's a cabinet level position under the executive branch. So if you'd like to know more, and there's a lot of uh, some haywire ideas these days about the idea of canning NOAA and turning everything over to a private agency, thereby making you pay twice for a weather forecast that you get now by paying once with your tax dollars. And the main reason, as I understand it, is because NOAA talks about climate change too much. So if you'd like to know more about what NOAA does and ask the people who work for NOAA under the National Weather Service, here's your opportunity. September 28th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you'd like to find out more and about what the rules are, there's no alcohol, there's no pets except for service animals and the time frame and everything else directions. Uh, the address for this is 5974 
Commerce Boulevard in Morristown, Tennessee, 37814. You can find out more at the National Weather Service website at weather.gov. That's the main weather page for the National Weather Service. Three-letter identifier is MRX for Morristown. You can also get more information at our website, wdef.com slash weather. If you'd like to find out uh, even more about what's available there and more on our forecast and tons of other weather information uh, as well. think that'll do it for tonight. We've been going for almost half an hour, so I think we're going to go ahead and close things up uh, for this evening and get you back to your <clears throat> excuse me, regular Tuesday show. Uh, thanks to all the new viewers on Twitch. Had some new ones show up in the last couple of days. Glad to have you on board. Uh, everybody on YouTube, thank you as well for stopping by and also signing up. More information again at our website, wdef.com slash weather. Chip Chapman will have more for you bright and early tomorrow morning. That's Wednesday, peak of the week, the 17th of June. And, of course, I'll be back tomorrow night with an update as to what's going on on air at 5, 36, 7, and 11. And, of course, here on Weather Overtime, your video weather blog from this area of the Tennessee River Valley, North Georgia, and Northeast Alabama. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik, live and direct from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Thanks for stopping by to watch, and you can find out more again at our website, wdef.com weather.